the cubitis region. And when you palpate on the two sides, medially and later you also you find is a bony prominence. So medially, the bony prominence is medial epicondyle and laterally it's a lateral epicondyle. These are bony prominences on which bone? Humerus. Humerus at its lower end has condyle, that's the condylar end, which actually is modified into capitulum and trochlea. But what do the condyles you have? Epicondyles. Epi. So epicondyles on the medial and lateral side, they are easily palpable. Even in your, I mean in a living subject, you can palpate in yourself, you have bony prominences on the two sides of the elbow. Out of the two, which is more prominent, medial or lateral? Yes, so medial epicondyle is more prominent than the lateral epicondyle. And if you have ever tried to palpate the medial epicondyle on its posterior surface, you might find is a nerve passing below that. That nerve gets compressed sometimes, right? When it gets compressed, you find a tingling sensation, a spark tingling sensation on the forearm side, ulnar border. That is because of the compression of ulnar nerve behind the medial epicondyle. Then in the center, just here below, you find is a bony prominent here. This pointed process, when you flex the elbow, this pointed process here, it is called Olecranon process. This olecranon process is a part of which bone? Is a part of which bone? Alina. So this bone, this olecranon process is a part of Alina. Now there is some correlation between these bony prominences. When you are standing like at ease or in an anatomical position, if you look this elbow from behind and you mark out the three bony prominences the medial epicondyle, olecranon and then the lateral epicondyle right so you will find that these three in an extended elbow these three bony prominences are in a straight line But then you, when you make it at a 90 degrees, when you flex the elbow at a 90 degrees, here, and you again join the three bony prominences, including a line from medial epicondyle to the lateral epicondyle, and from olecranon to the two condyles, you find it becomes a triangle. In a, in a flexed elbow, connecting the three points, it will form is a triangle. triangle be a right angle triangle, isosceles triangle, equilateral triangle, scalene triangle. I hope you know the terminology related scalene triangle, isosceles and equilateral triangle. So the triangle formed by connecting the three bony prominences after flexing the elbow at a 90 degree, this triangle will be equilateral triangle, scalene triangle or isosceles triangle. Earlier it used to be mentioned in the books that the triangle being formed here is an isosceles triangle. Means what? From alicrinan to the medial epicondyle, the distance is same as olecranon to the lateral epicondyle and then the base will be formed by the transverse line connecting the two epicondyles. So that we call that will be called an isosceles triangle. But now the research scholars, the people who are interested in research, they have worked upon it, maybe living subjects not necessarily in cadavers, but in living subjects, so maybe around thousands of people with different age groups, with different, <coughs> both the sexes. They have got this to conclusion that none of the borders of this triangle are equal. So that becomes a scalene triangle. Remember now, that this triangle formed by the three bony prominences 
seen in a 90 degree flexed elbow seen from behind this triangle will be a scalene triangle none of the three lines will be equal now but still it can be asked from alikronan i mean the which side of the triangle will be the shortest from alikronan of course this line joining the two epicondyles will be the longest then from alikronan to the medial epicondyle alikronan to the lateral epicondyle which will be a smaller line 